Welcome again. Uh, we're back from Italy. <laughs> we're in the Netherlands again, uh, this time, with quite a compelling piece, actually. Uh, whereas the Italian pieces I showed you, big churches or small house, this is a totally different ball game. Uh, it's again, it's a triptych, but it doesn't look like a triptych yet. Eh? Uh, this probably, this piece was made, let's say, 15th, 15th century and eh? uh, uh, 1400s for either a monastery, for an, uh, a monk or, or a nun, who knows, eh? because monks and nuns now are known as maybe the had the poor, the simple, uh, caring for the destitute monks and uh, nuns, by the way, in the 1400s in the Netherlands. A lot of them owned a lot of money. Rich families, by the way, always parked an, uh, one of their unmarried children in a monastery or nunnery, by the way. Uh, so they, they actually, a lot of art made in that period was made for monasteries, for monks and nuns. Uh, and in this case, this is, well, the biggest reminder to not fuck it up during this life because there is hell and damnation there. Eh? Uh, so it could have also hung in a small provincial church because the quality is not really high. But the artist did his, did his best eh? and he tried to mimic kind of red marble slabs on the outside. And this is, by the way, uh, the view that you would see most of the year. Uh, a lot of these altarpieces that are now open uh, when you visit the church were closed the majority of the year. Only on high holidays did you see the splendor and, and the, the colors of a painting. Eh? Imagine a late medieval life and no colors whatsoever. Eh? The, the, the people couldn't afford blue or red or yellow. These are colors you only saw at court or in a church. Eh? So it's quite spectacular that you looked at this a whole year, but there are always there are clues uh, about what will happen when you open this. We see the skull here, eh? a, a prominent skull, which is an allusion to death, of course. Eh? And we see a luguber, a song here, a, a, a psalm, eh? which deals with death. Eh? We see the cup of Jesus' blood. Well, we're gonna prepare ourselves because if we open this work, it's showtime. <laughs> you see the colors coming out and you see all the grotesques and we recognize what we see here it's the last judgment eh? so we have Jesus here uh, crowned on an orb eh? so that represents the world that eh? Jesus eh? is rules about on the world that eh? he's come back and the, you know the, the angels eh? as, as described in the apocalypse because we're looking at the apocalypse eh? they blow their trumpets and it's time to find out who goes to either hell or heaven. Eh? So you see the lucky guys, and that's why I, I, I think it's made for a monk. And you see the lucky guys, they go to heaven. Eh? So you see the monk there with, with the tonsure, eh? the, the haircut, uh, which by the way comes, uh, the, uh, the Capuchin monks in Italy had that haircut. That's where the cappuccino comes from, by the way. Eh? And when you pour milk in the cappuccino, you have a little circle on your coffee. It comes from those haircuts, by the way. Eh? So they go inside, the eternal Jerusalem, uh, pushed inside by these angels. Beautiful foliage, by the way, huh? I have to say. Uh, but it only grows at the side of, of heaven. In the hell, it's not that funny. I love, by the way, how it's, how it's a kind of really, really prudish <laughs> uh, heaven. As the, uh, I've, uh, it's really rare to see it on these pieces, but the, 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 the angels are holding up a little piece of cloth to, to, to not reveal the buttocks of that. Um, uh, of that of that monk, and so you see here people resurrecting, eh? because everyone resurrects when Jesus comes back. We all know that. <laughs> so uh, we have a few monks probably with the shaven head, and there's you know the trees are not that, that happy there. And you see uh, the, this kind of uglyish figure looking up at you know here's the party. Eh? This is this is the good stuff. You know uh, this is the scene of hell. And probably, the, you see, this is, this is hey, or some of you might think, hey, Hieronymus bus. Yes, indeed. This was all over uh, Europe around 1500. And all these grotesque uh, uh, faces and grimaces because people thought that this would happen. Literally, around 1500, you know, 1500, a crown year, you know, 1500 years after Jesus died. So this must be the moment that he came back. And also, big panic. Because uh, the discovery of, uh, of America kind of fucked up everything as well. Because, you know, it says in the Gospels, when the lost tribes of Israel are, are found, the apocalypse will come. Well, they thought that the Indians were the lost tribes of Israel. So you see a, a whole movement through Europe. 
uh, that paints these grotesque figures, even in sculpture, even on churches. Hieronymus Buzz is the most famous one of that, you know, and a surrealist mystic. But this painter kind of delved in that as well. Uh, so we have these beaked figures you know, with glowing genitals. We have these these kind of dragon-like, strange figures with purple wings excreting and kind of ripping out the intestines of this poor woman and the man here who definitely didn't do a good job during life. Eh? So if you saw this, not often, because you don't have to bomb someone all too much with this, otherwise it doesn't make an impression anymore, you kind of think twice. You want to be on that side. Eh? Some of us would love to be on this side because it seems more fun after all the, the turmoil. But for us medieval friends, that's definitely the side that you want to be. We, yeah, oh, I thought we would see a little booby, but, <laughs> but unfortunately not. Eh? So you pray for this, you contemplate on bad and evil. And then we close it again, like this episode. Ciao!